Hello everybody, I'm Meso, and another one down. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking to you all about the recently concluded Artaka mock contest over on the TGV message boards to decide the canon appearance of Artaka from Bionicle G1, as well as introducing the next phase of that contest, which has begun today, the artwork portion. First and foremost, let's walk it back. So over the last few weeks to the last you know month and a half, we've been holding the Artaka mock contest, Meet the Maker, on the TTV message boards. And that recently wrapped up a few days ago. And first and foremost, before we do anything else, I would like to congratulate the winner of the contest, Connor Hoffman, a.k.a. Wombat Combat Pictures, and his winning mock, Artaka the Originator, which won the contest by a significant margin. I would also like to congratulate not only all of the other five finalists, who were all exceptional, but also anyone who entered the contest in general. I know some people throughout its run, you know, they got a little discouraged that their mock didn't make it through, and, you know, you might not even listen to this. The fact of the matter is, with contests like this, when you have over a hundred entries, you know, and you know only one can make it through, there's going to be a lot more disappointment on the personal basis than not a lot of times. So I don't think it's uncommon for people to get discouraged that their mock didn't, you know, go very far. I just want to reiterate the whole point of these contests is for the community to come together, you know, and partner with Greg to enrich the G1 story and also just be creative. And whether you win or lose, anyone who enters and tries their best, you're helping be a part of that process. You're doing everything that an individual can with our, you know, limited capacity to keep Bionicle alive. Just remember that that is the spirit. And that's what we're all, like, participating in this for, I would hope. So, even if you didn't make it that far, it was still a celebration of creativity. And I can't thank you all enough for entering. But Connor Hoffman's won. And I'm very happy about it, because I like his mock a lot. You know, we'll eventually talk about the contest fully on Knack and Jay and give our personal thoughts. But, you know, now you might wonder, what's next? Well, today... LJ has posted the topic for the next phase of the contest, the artwork portion. Because for anyone who needs a quick refresher, the mock is not, strictly speaking, the canon appearance. Per our negotiations with BSO1 back during the early days of this contest, we was come to the conclusion that the mocks would serve as a piece of inspiration for the artwork, which will be the officially recognized canon design featured on BSO-1. It's just like what happened with Hellrex. So now that Connor's mock has won, we are beginning the artwork portion to draw your interpretation of Connor's mock with the Mask of Creation, which you are allowed to design. You can either make a brand new mask, you can use a mask that already exists that you have permission to use. So I see a lot of people asking, well, can we just use the same mask that Connor used? The one that, you know, was modeled by King K? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can. Or you can make one yourself. You know, whatever. It also doesn't need to be the same color. Um, people have been asking about whether, you know, it needs to be gunmetal. It does not. It can be gold. It can be silver. It can be whatever you want. I'm just going to remind people of a few stipulations, rules, and important things to note for this artwork portion. So as stated by LJ in the topic, a minimum of two images must be provided. One of the mask containing the front, side, and top view, and one of the winning mock wearing it. You know, all artwork must be in color, so not grayscale or, you know, anything like that. Once your entry has been officially entered and accepted, no further changes can be made without staff approval. Um, we encourage your entry to be recognizably within the Bionicle world. However, we have no restriction on art styles. 
Uh, and while we accept any style, we do not permit any character artwork featuring any characters that appear too human. Examples of that would be a lack of technical bionicle pieces or elements or human faces on Kanohi. Uh, 3D entries are allowed, but any entry using 3D must provide the model file at the time of entry if they are designing a new mask. Uh, and lastly, 3D entries must not be mock recreations and renders using Studio or LEGO Digital Designer. This is your interpretation, not a simple recreation. Uh, there's a bunch of other rules in the topic. I would encourage you to go look them over. Those are just a few that I wanted to, you know, give you all in this video. There's a few other, they're, they're more guidelines than anything else, but LJ writes them a very nice thing that I will read verbatim. Gray-green, Artaka's color, as cited in Reign of Shadows was later confirmed by Greg Farshti as being a singular color, which in LEGO is commonly considered to be sand green. As the winning entry features sand green, it cannot be recolored to another shade other than gray green. So, this is the palette that Connor has chosen. This is the one that won. This is what our taka looks like. You know, that being said, we're not enforcing a specific hex, but your entry must feature gray-green, and the only parts of the entry allowed to be that color are the ones featured on the winning model. So, take note of that. If you recolor, you know, the armor on his legs as sand-green, your entry won't be accepted. You know, there are some elements of stylization, depending on how the character is drawn, obviously, but... That stylization does not include recoloring huge chunks. So just keep that in mind. On the subject of the runes, we know these runes have been carved into the armor from early in his life. You know, the quote specifically cites that his armor was covered in runes, carved at the beginning of time. We don't know anything else about what they are or what they look like. So as such, you're welcome to be creative with them. We have no restriction on the color of the runes, nor what they are, but we will be keeping an eye out for what they look like, so do not use the runes as a way to circumvent our rules. So, again, case in point, his armor is gunmetal. If you draw a rune that encompasses like 99% of the armor and recolors it sand green, that's not a rune. It's very obvious that you're trying to you know circumvent the rules, so we would opt to disqualify that entry. So just be, you know, we're not stupid. <laughs> we'll be keeping an eye out for stuff like that. But that's really about it as far as restrictions and rules. Go read the topic. Make sure you're all on the same page. The entry period will run for three weeks, starting today, October 9th, and ending October 30th at 11.59 Eastern. Just make sure to submit the, top, submit the art to the topic properly. That's all detailed in the rules. And uh, that's basically that. I'm really excited to see what all of you have to create. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful stuff all around. And as always, thank you for your participation in these contests. Congrats to Connor and everyone else that entered. I'm Meso, and I look forward to seeing what you have to create. Have a good one.